So this is the beginning of step two. This is adding the paper doll, Josephine, to an art journal page. So what I've got is my large Rangers Dilusions art journal. And for the background, I just tore some pieces of book text, put it down with matte gel medium, let it dry, and then I used a brayer and two colors of paint, the yellow and the teal, to just go over the page with some uh, texture. When you bray or paint, you get a nice texture and everybody does this. So I'm, I didn't show it because um, it's in so many videos, it's been around forever. So anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm taking those circles that I had punched out from the background from the kit and I've laid them out around. I'm gonna glue them into place. And I think what I'm gonna do is put her here. She is a little bit tall. But that's okay, she's gonna be fine. And then, you know, I can always unfold her legs as they go off the page a little bit. I can just bend her leg and put her into shape when I close the book. So it's really cute, looks adorable on this page. I like the bright colors behind her, it makes it pop. And then of course I'm gonna do some uh, journaling over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue those pieces into place. So my circles are all in place, they've been glued down, and next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a blue Posca pen. This is the PC7M, so it's got a rounded bullet tip, like a dot tip, and I chose this color, which is the blue, and it's kind of a royal blue, because those colors are in the doll and in the tool that I use, so I wanted to add some to the page to kind of tie them together. So what I'm gonna do first is to just make a section over here, and I'm gonna just go like this and draw a nice sketchy little area. That's where my little journaling words are gonna go. Okay, I love that. And now I'm gonna take this same pan and I'm gonna go around this border edge in that same kind of a sketchy way connecting my little dots and adding a nice little border. And it's very light-handed sketchy, so I'm not worrying about being precise or perfect. I want it to look graffiti, graffiti sketchy. I'm going back over it and kind of crisscrossing some lines. Going around some of the circles. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is while that paint is still wet, I'm gonna take my finger and smudge it a little bit. It dries pretty quick, but if you smudge it out while it's still wet, it's not so precise and it makes a really nice effect. There, let's see if you can see that. It makes it really cool. It's still sketchy, but it smudges it out. So it's not so perfect. I want it to look graffiti. So now when you put her on top, look at how cool that's gonna look. The colors in the background are going to really make her pop. The journaling words in here are going to look really nifty. And so I think I'm going to do something in this outer space as well. Okay, so next I'm going to take some Neo Color 2 and I'm using, um, let's see, what color is this? I'm using a Carmine Red, Turquoise Blue, and Cobalt Blue. Those colors are in the doll. Again, I've chosen colors that are within the doll. And I'm gonna add those to the background everywhere except for where my journaling is gonna go. So what I'm doing is just taking the crayon and coloring it on the page randomly. And I'm gonna go around and do that with all three colors just to add a base of the Neo Color so Crayon. Next I'm taking a baby wipe that I've kind of just wadded up and I'm gonna go over those spots that just activates them because Neo colors are water soluble and the wetness of the baby white will activate it. And I'm dabbing, I'm not rubbing, I'm dabbing the color. And I'm making sure not to 
go into like the red into the blue because I don't want to make purple. I'm trying to keep them separate. But this is just going to bring out the vibrancy in those neo colors. They're so versatile and so much fun. Obviously, my favorite art supply. I mention them a lot. So I'm going to go in here and just dab, 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 and everywhere where I've colored them, activate those neo colors. And then the dabbing is also cool because it makes it look really nice and marbled. And then I'm going to let this really, really dry well. After I get done, let me show you up close what that looks like. I love it. It's going to be nice and bright and vibrant. It's really cool. So I'm going to let that uh, do the rest of it and let that dry. And then I'll show my next I love how this page is turning out. It's kind of kind of tie-dyed psychedelic a little bit wild but that's okay it's going to be pretty now i'm using this stencil this is um i'll put a link in the description box below it's just a stencil that came in a set that you can get on amazon and i'm going to put a couple of these in just a few little places just to add a little bit of something and i'm going to do them in a really dark black acrylic paint because i want to add some black elements to this Okay, so I'm using a sponge and I'm dabbing it in the paint on my palette and then going over my stencil. And I'm sure you've seen this a million times too, so I won't show the whole thing. I just think the really, really deep black elements are going to really make this page pop. And you know, with art journaling, it's kind of it's playtime so you never know how it's going to turn out you just kind of get the idea and go with it and then see how it looks in the end look how cool that looks so i'm going to add two probably two more maybe just do the rule of three in a triangle next i'm going to take a black stabilo pencil and i'm going to go around those circles that i added and just make a really nice heavy black outline around them and then use my finger the warmth of my finger to just blend it out. This is just going to make like a real smoky shadow around those cool circles that I punched out of the kit background. Like that. So it looks nice and smoky around them. So I'm going to do that around all the circles. Next I'm going to take a another PC7M Posca pen in black and I'm going to go around my uh, area here where the journaling is going to go and I'm going to do a dot border. These are great for dot borders because it's a nice perfect size and all you have to do is just lightly press down. You don't want to press to release paint. You just want to press to make the dot. So you don't press hard but I'm going to make a nice cute little dot border. So that dot border looks really cute around that place where I'm going to do my journaling and I love how it's nice and bright and then it's muted in colors around it so it makes the journaling place really pop. So this is turning out super cute. In those little circles in the designs that I punched out they have little tiny stars and they're just kind of um, kind of dark so I'm going to take a Posca pen and just bump up those little yellow stars so that they show up a little bit better because I really love those little star elements. Let me show you what it looks like up close. The difference between using a Posca, see how it's bumped it up compared to the one on the left. So it's just going to make those little stars and those circles really pop. So here's my background done with my stenciled black images and then I put the words think positive and positive things will happen. There's my saying. I bumped up the stars in the little circles. They look really cute and they really pop now. And next I'm going to add my paper doll to the page. So I think I'm going to put her up here and I'm going to go as close to the top as I can. I know her head tips and turns, but I think I'm going to glue it down permanent and put it in a position where it'll allow as much space as possible for the body on the page because the legs are long. I think I'm going to put her there, right there. 
So for gluing her down, I want to only glue down the parts that I don't want to have move. I am going to glue her head into place. Even though I've moved it, I've moved it where I want it and I'm going to glue it. I'm going to glue her main body and then just these two spots behind the skirt. That way her legs can still move, her arms can still move. So I'm going to go ahead and use some art glitter glue and put it on the back in just those spots and glue her down. So there she is and you can position her arms and her legs. Right now her legs are kind of off the page. I've got them straight down. But that's the fun of playing with a paper doll in your journal. Then I can um, put her in a different position to close the book. Like just cross her legs up like this to make sure they're inside when I close the page. And then when I open the page I can move them into a different position. Put them off to the side like this. There's so many different things that you can do. That's what's so fun about an articulated paper doll. So I'll have a link in the description box below for this doll. This is part two. So in part one, I show the doll and how I put her together and decorated her. And there's also a discount coupon from the Etsy store that this came from. And then this one is just the background. So I hope you enjoyed this and that you make a paper doll for your art journal. It's so much fun. Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs and go make art because art soothes the heart.